Hi, welcome to the demonstration of the new Syncified lesson, Wetland in a Pan. I'm going to show you both the online resource and the actual physical models and the lesson as we would say that we should do it in person. So first, you're going to get a, um, an account and a connection to all of the Think Water Thinkified lessons and you'll see at the beginning of every lesson is a summary of the point of the lesson, its objectives, and also if it comes from, from another lesson, an older version of the lesson, we will reference that as well so you can build a bridge between the old lesson and the new lesson. Go ahead. So if you click from the summary, you're going to first get to a slide which is going to be a summary slide of the knowledge we're trying to build and the knowledge, if you remember, is comprised of both the vocabulary or the information we're trying to teach, the topic we're trying to teach, and the thinking structures we're going to use to help kids understand the, that topic in and of itself. So you'll see here on this slide we have it listed as knowledge, information, and thinking, and we have an overall picture of the map. When we click again, you'll get one view of the entire map for all of the parts and pieces of this lesson. And this is something you can print and use or put up on your wall for your students so they can stay grounded in the concepts you're going to teach as you teach it. The next slide is going to be the first of several activity slides. And what I want you to notice is on the right hand side is what we call a meta map or um, a visual representation or diagram of the concept that we're trying to teach. And in this case, the activity is what is a wetland? And we're going to break wetland into its three major parts and explain that to, to our students. You'll also see down on the bottom left an attachment, which is a handout. If you click on that and you go to that tab, you'll see there's an actual picture of the model you're going to build, which I have built for you over here using think blocks. So the first thing you would do with your kids is you would take a large think block, you would write wetland on it. We use this black tag to indicate that this is the concept we're trying to distinguish, trying to understand deeply. So you would take this and you would say, okay kids, what is a wetland? What are the parts of a wetland? And we're trying to get them to under understand the part hole structure of a wetland. And so for example, we would tell them that a wetland in this case has three primary parts. A land area that's saturated by water, which also then is comprised of hydric soil. And that that hydric soil means that it requires, a wetland requires distinct or unique aquatic types of vegetation. And so the big idea we're trying to get across to kids in this activity is that a wetland is comprised of three parts. The soil, land area that's saturated by water, and the unique vegetation. So our next activity is over here on the next slide. We're going to look at examples of wetlands to give kids some sort of realistic grounding of what they might see in their own communities when they're looking for wetlands. And we have a handout, which is attached there as well on the bottom, which we're going to give kids to read, which basically summarizes four types of wetlands. So you can give your kids that, have them read it. And then we're going to do, again, we're going to take our think blocks and we're going to make a physical model of the ideas, these abstract ideas of wetlands. So we're going to take a large block, examples of wetlands, and we're going to say, hey, can you tell us some examples of wetlands based on what you read? So kids will say something like bogs and swamps, and they're going to also distinguish between two types of marshes, saltwater and freshwater marshes. And then all you need to do is remind them that in this case right now, the examples of wetlands that we're going to talk about are these four things, and these are also existing in a part whole structure. That's one of the thinking skills we're going to try to emphasize in language throughout the lesson. So our next activity slide, if we clicked on through, is really the, I would say the heart, the meat of the lesson conceptually, the thing that we really want kids to understand, which is the primary functions of a wetland. And um, we're going to do two things to really um, concretize this idea for kids. The first is we're going to start with um, physicalizing the concept function of a wetland with think blocks. So we take again a large block, this is our big idea, and we're going to say can you please, you know, let's talk about what are the main functions of a wetland. And the four that we want to emphasize at this point are that, for example, they prevent soil erosion and they reduce flood damage. And equally important is that, it fil that wetlands filter pollutants uh, out of our water systems. And also they recharge our underground water supply. And so what I'm hoping you'll see is that all of these ideas that we're trying to build in, across the activities in the lesson at this point are existing in a part-whole structure. And we really want kids to understand part and whole relationships between ideas. Now, 
the next thing we really want to do is we want to take this abstract concept, which we've concretized on these blocks, and we want to really reify it or concretize it in a physical model, which you can either build ahead of the lesson or you can have pre-built depending on your time constraints. And again, on our um, online lesson, you'll see that we have handouts prepared and attached, one of which shows you how to build the model right here. There it is, one that shows you how to build the model, and the other one which takes you step by step through the entire experiment so that you can uh, replicate this with your kids over and over again. So let's just run through the experiment really quickly just for fun so you can see what, what it's uh, meant to do. And the first thing I would say is when you're about to start the experiment, I would be very careful to relate this structure that you did on the blocks with each of the parts and pieces of the physical geological model you've built. So for example, where we have recharge underground water supply, we've concretized that idea with this straw in both of the models, which will go from the lake water back into the um, underground water, underground earth. Then we also have um, filtering the pollutants, which is a function of the wetland, and reducing flood damage, which will be particularly salient once you see the experiment go through. And we have our towns down in front of the lakes. And also that we want to prevent soil erosion. We don't have any dirt. Okay, so we've taken our, uh, our think block models and we've co-located these four ideas with the way that we've actually concretized them through this model. And we're going to run our experiment now, so I'm going to put these ideas over to the side to remind our students that these are the four functions of this wetland that we're trying to really do an experiment on and to keep track of. So the first thing in our experiment after you've built this model is we're going to take some dirt to represent, of course, our soil. We're going to put it right on these slopes and we're going to tamp it down just a little bit on both of the models. And this is to illustrate soil erosion once we start having some water involved. So that's the first part. Then we're going to fill our clean water lake and you're going to want to fill clean water all the way up to the edge of the pan, just like this. a little bit more and then we're going to also create our clean water lake on this area which has a wetland in it we fill that up now the next part of this experiment is i'm going to make sure there's enough water in this lake not quite there better yeah so make sure this one is full make sure this one is full and now what we want to do is we want to look at the idea of filtering pollutants for one of the things. So I have in here a small bottle of red dye to represent our pollutants. And I'm going to, oh, I'm going to make this water polluted, which is a bad thing, but necessary for this lesson. And I'm going to mix it up a little bit just by swirling it around. I might recommend you have some sort of a stick or instrument so that you don't have to actually stick your hand in there. And let's just make this a little bit so they're about the same, same color. So let's just make sure this is mixed up. Now, at the same time, you're going to pour both pitchers of polluted water into both pans. You can do it or you can have your kids do it. And we're just going to watch what happens. We remind the kids we're looking for these four functions of this wetland as you start to pour. So you can do it at the same time, so just like this. It requires a little bit of coordination. And make sure your kids are noticing what's happening in both of the pans at the same time. And let's just do that, keep going, and see what happens. So as you're doing this, you can lead the discussion, having them say what's happening to the dirt, what's happening to the underground water supply where the water's going. Notice also there are towns at the edge of both of our lakes. And if you live there, you might prefer to be in a different town than the one, uh-oh, on the right. Now, let's stop pouring because we've poured about the same amount in both. And so now we can illustrate to our students that 
This area, which lacks a wetland, is doing several things. First, you can see all of the debris, the soil that's in the water. You can see the water, obviously, <laughs> is taking out the town, which is a bad thing. You also see that this straw is also, uh, it's just sort of a big mess. It's going everywhere. And um, notice here what the function of the wetland is. It really holding up to what we said, the idea is it's filtered the pollutants. There's no water here. It's reduced flood damage. This town is doing fine. The soil's still intact and in, uh, it's gonna be recharging the underground water supply. So, once you've done this experiment, what I wanna make sure that you do is you also make sure that you're checking your kids' understanding both verbally through the discussion as you do the experiment. We've also got attached to our maps, we've got a check for understanding in a worksheet, which you can have them fill out and then have a discussion around the experiment results worksheet. And then the last thing we wanna do after we've sort of De de debugged or, de or broken down the uh, results of the experiment both on the worksheet and the discussion is we want them to do one last activity which is to really take the time to relate the importance of wetlands to their own selves. So we've got another worksheet which puts them in the center of the worksheet and has them really explicate the relationship between them and these functions of wetlands and they can just fill in these blanks here. Now, the last thing I just want to tell you, or make sure that you've noted as you've been seeing this demonstration, is that in, in this lesson, every slide has a map on, uh, on the, on the right-hand side. And that really is our way of mapping out both the information and the thinking. And we map them up here. And then if you think about over here, all these models, these three models, are really one way of activating what we've mapped directly in this lesson. So we've mapped it, we've activated it with think blocks, and then we've really further sort of activated and reified all of these concepts, which were the big lesson, the functions of wetlands, in this experiment. And then where we've done is we've designed this worksheet here as a check. And we're checking not only that they understand all of the functions of the wetland and the parts and pieces of the wetland, but it, that they understand how they've thought through this information, that they've they've distinguished between these two types of of, um, of geographies, and that and that they distinguish the effect of this wetland on all of these factors. And we really want them to understand how they're thinking these things through as they learn them. So this is just one um, of many what we call Thinkified lessons. We uh, have a lot of them that are going to be up online uh, for your use. I hope that you really embrace them and and learn great things with your kids and have fun so thanks for watching we'll see you next time